Hello everyone, welcome to another video on next race. Today I'll be talking about red carbon quantum dots. Here I'll be mainly speaking about the quantum dots which have red fluorescence and are carbon based. What makes this carbon based quantum dot interesting? If you are working on quantum dots, you must have got the idea about their general properties, like they have a size range of 1 to 10 nanometers and have a typical fluorescence. The main advantage of carbon based system is that this quantum dots could be very easily synthesized by following a traditional hydrothermal process. And talking about the toxicity, these carbon based quantum dots are generally very less toxic. If you are considering a well known red quantum dot that is cadmium telluride, and we know that cadmium is toxic, so cadmium telluride quantum dots have a toxicity effect. But while uh, talking in terms of carbon based system, they are not generally very toxic. This is a very interesting work that has been published in NGO at the Kemi. Yeah, the scientists have used different isomers of phenylene diamine, which have been used as a precursor for producing three different fluorescent carbon dots. Here you can see that only in case of paraphenylene diamine, they are able to obtain a red fluorescence. This is the image of the fluorescence pattern obtained by exciting the quantum dots by a 365 nanometer light source. This is the PVA film, polyvinyl alcohol film that have been prepared by adding the carbon dots into the PVA resin. And you can see that still persist the respective fluorescence and have been uh, also utilized in a bioimaging application. So what makes this phenylene diamine precursor interesting is that they are well known for uh, producing many heterocyclic compounds and polymers and we know it is very important to have a polymerization reaction for the going on inside the hydrosynthesis process for the synthesis of carbon dots. This is a, another example of a red carbon quantum dots which is synthesized from citric acid as the main carbon precursor by adding with ethylene diamine in formamide solvent. This report has claimed to obtain a quantum yield of 53% while considering when considering the uh, carbon based system 53% quantum yield is a very high percentage for red emitting uh, fluorescence and the obtained carbon dots were also produced on a ground scale so it is a very interesting uh, work you can go through this to see how ground scale synthesis have also been obtained Coming to the purification technique, we know that uh, it is important to purify carbon quantum dots and any kind of uh, molecules and uh, materials after uh, synthesizing. Purity is a key in the synthesis laboratory for best result. I'll be making a separate video on uh, purification of quantum dots, but for the time being, I would like to mention that it is uh, important to use column chromatography when we are specifically interested in synthesizing red emitting carbon quantum dots. If you are not using column chromatography, it might be possible that you are seeing a red color in the obtaining uh, solution of carbon dots, but on irradiating it with a UV source, you are not seeing red fluorescence. So it is uh, very important to use the column chromatography technique to get the specific size range and specific fluorescence Specifically, read. It is very important to use column chromatography technique, or you will be able to get the desired red fluorescence. Other than this, you also have to use the dialysis membrane and the syringe membrane filter. These are some of the sources from which uh, I have taken help in preparing this presentation. There are also thousands of uh, interesting work in. Google Scholar related to quantum dots and also red carbon quantum dots. Happy learning. Thank you.